Let's talk about real life issues Love and relationships Let's have a good time with the missus The missus, yeah Celebrities Let's talk about caring events Let's talk about things you don't see On regular TV So join in on PG Tea Time PG Tea Time Tune in on PG Guess what? This is PGT time. On PGT time, we cover the black community. <laughs> I don't give a damn what they do. If it interests me, I'm showing y'all. <laughs> I'm showing y'all flat out. Flat out, y'all. Flat out, y'all. good. Y'all was good. It's your girl, the missus. The messes with the kisses, baby. Mm. Yeah, mm, yeah, it's me. It's me. It's still me. I told y'all. I told y'all. I did. if y'all be on my personal page, then y'all know all the ins and outs, all the backstage stuff, all that. I don't post everything on everything, okay? But if you are on my personal page, and I'm gonna tell, I never tell y'all what my personal page is. I'm gonna tell y'all right now. I'm gonna tell y'all right now. Now, y'all figure out how to spell it and do all that. But I'm going to tell y'all right now what my personal page is. And if you go over there and follow me, I'll friend you back on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> but it is Tanil Latrice Davis, baby. That's what it is. So if you go find it, then hey, you'll be able to get some special perks, okay? So I did not go and get my hair done on Saturday. I didn't go. I didn't go. So I said, you know what? <sighs> Brother Marquis coming on Monday. Brother Marquis is a celebrity, baby. Legendary. I got to go do something. So y'all know me. I don't mind taking the hair risk. Brother Marquis, I don't mind taking the hair risk over here. Okay. But I did take a picture of it. Y'all saw it on my Facebook page, the personal page. And some of y'all saw it on IG just as well. And y'all was liking it. Y'all was liking it. Y'all was feeling it. Y'all said, okay, you and Kira did a good job. I told y'all my son was like, thumbs down, mom. Thumbs down. He, he wasn't feeling it. He wasn't feeling it at all. But it's all good, baby. Y'all already know I'm going to rock whatever I can rock. Okay? That's what I'm going to do. So... Again, we have Brother Marquise in the building of Two Live Crew. Yes, Two Live Crew. <laughs> but he is here. We are going to talk to him today, tonight. Um, we can, we're gonna have some fun. Okay, we're gonna have some fun. We're gonna talk about the journey of Two Live Crew. There is a couple of things I want to ask him that I've been wanting to know just as well. But we're going to talk about all of that. And, of course, we will be playing Rapper's Delight, baby. Yeah, I know. I always got to play Rapper's Delight with my artists that come on. We usually play it on Saturdays. But, baby, it's a legendary show. It's a legendary show because we got a legendary person here, okay? So, y'all tune in. Relax. Uh, we about to have some fun. Explicit language. I even got the little sign up, y'all. There you go. Explicit language. Explicit language. Mom Peach, if you don't want to hear the explicit language, you might not want to be on here tonight. <laughs> but it's definitely going to be explicit language, okay? So, again, thank you all so, so much for joining tonight. We are about to go ahead and get started. So, I'm about to go ahead and bring the man of the hour up, baby, okay? This is Brother Marquise from the group that we all love. 
and some of them hate. Okay, but we all love them, and that is two live crew, baby. Here we go. <laughs> 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 How did I do, Brother Marquis? How did I oh, do? You did good, girl. You did good, and your hair looks gorgeous. You look gorgeous you. as well. Thank you so much, and yes, you look man. great just as well, may I add. Thank you. You look man. awesome. Well, thank you for coming. I really appreciate it. Um, we've talked probably a few times on, you know, doing this show and everything. Right. And I'm just so, so, so honored to have you. I'm so honored. Nice to be here. <laughs> here. <laughs> yep. All right. Yes, but I'm so honored to have you here. Um, let everybody know a little bit about Brother Marquise. Um, for those that, which I'm, it's hard to believe if they don't know about Two Live Crew. But... <laughs> You know, let everybody know just a little bit something, something. Well, yes, uh, Brother Marquise, uh, go by the acronym BMQ sometimes. My real name is Mark Ross. I was born in Rochester, New York, and raised in several other places around the country as well. Uh, I joined Two Live Crew, what, back in what, like 84, 84, 83, and uh, yeah, we went to Miami and you know, unfortunately got into a lot of bad things with the music and a lot of good things transpired and it was a lot of good opportunities. And yeah, and I'm here today and I'm here today talking to you. And uh, I am just grateful to be seen and heard and not viewed and to be alive. And I just thank God for every precious breath that's going in and out of my Grateful to be alive. I know that's right. We gotta give you a hand clap for that. We gotta give you a hand clap for that. One. <laughs> The hand clap. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, brother Mike, he's <laughs> saying, we got about 10, maybe 15 different sounds. Right, but I right. always seem to just hit the applause button. Right, right. Jesse, I don't know why. You got to read them. I don't know exactly what they sound like. I done hit some <laughs> and made a mistake. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, uh, but yes, I love the hand clap. I love the hand clap. Now, <laughs> Brother Marquis, let's start from the beginning, okay? Because mm -hmm. one of the things that I want to discuss, um, we're not going to read none of the lyrics um, to some of the songs, but I just want to know what, like, you know, one thing about over here, we try to keep it 100 over here, Brother Marquis. Yes. So I want to know, like, what was the conversation like for y'all to be like, okay, we finna put out these type of lyrics? to these songs, okay? Because we're talking about some really, really good songs that, I mean, we all have heard, but at the same time, we all were scared to play them around our family members, our mothers, our fathers. <laughs> we had to hide to play them. So, well, go ahead. Well, you know, being at like 19, 20, 18, 19, and 20, you know, making those kind of records and, you know, everybody's coming into their self sexually with women and girls and, you know, experiencing some of the things that we were talking about. It was kind of easy to, you know, make that type of material. Uh, <clears throat> it transpired from a uh, China man making the song called Throw the D. And, uh, you know, Throw the D led into, you know, like move something and, hey, we want some and, you know, and so on and so on. So we kind of throw the D with such a, you know, a, a success kind of underground. And it was, you know, starting to be the signature sound of two live crew. So we just took that and expounded on it and just kept it going. Okay. So was y'all just sitting around and somebody said, let's use these type of lyrics? <laughs> <laughs> or y'all was just, I mean, like, how did y'all get started? Because wasn't nobody doing that back then. I know it. I know. Well, for me, you know, I was kind of, I always thought I was so, somewhat of a comedian. So, you know, when I would get the music and and we would say, okay, this is what we're talking about. It was kind of easy to do. Yeah, we would sit around and have a few laughs, sometimes have a few drinks and, you know, and, and, and the material would basically, you know, come, you know, come about on its own. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, how old were you guys around this time? Well, I know when I was in, 
I think I started with two live crew around like 19, 19. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. Now, was, I mean, you had the typical parents, you uh, know, hard working parents out there working all the time. No, I came from, like, a, single, this... came from a single parent home. I'm the only child. Okay. Of course, my mother died. I am the only child. And oh, um, I'm yeah. sorry, the only child. Yep, I'm the only child. Yep. Wow. Now, yeah. did your mom die before Two Life Crew came mm -hmm. involved? No, nah, no, nah, she died a little bit. She died like right when it was right when it was like taking off. Like oh, okay. Taking off, like yeah, ninety one, ninety one. She died. So ninety one. Okay. That was after uh that was after uh banded banned in the USA right before the uh, sports weekend popped the coochie popped the coochie right there. Yeah. Okay, okay. Now, how did she feel about the music? Or did, did you <laughs> let her hear? Did you let her hear, brother Marquise? Yeah, well, you know, my mother worked for the record label. My mother worked for the record label in the warehouse in the distribution department. So. Okay. Yeah. Mother said, oh, you know, I don't know where you got all those cuss words from. You know, I don't cuss like that. You know, I don't know where you got all those cuss words from. <laughs> and, you know, at that time I was grown. So, exactly. you, know, choice, you know, that was the choice mm -hmm. that I made. And, you know, to, to do that explicit material, she was cool with it. I was a grown man. Okay. And you literally, like, no matter where you went, you guys went and performed that, you didn't feel no type of way? Like, it yes, was just... I did. It was the norm. Uh, uh, yes, I felt, um, uh, I felt kind of convicted a lot, you know, because it 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 was more. It could have been more to being an artist than just cuss words. You know, it's easy to throw a cuss word in something. You know what I'm saying? It's versus being a really good artist where you had to replace that word. And I could have said something a bit more uplifting and edifiable, and not so degrading and disrespectful and demoralizing towards women mm. so you know sometimes it would get you know and then you know older people of course that really couldn't understand it and then you know a lot of people in church a lot of church women would say things to me women of god and i have people of god in my family and you know and you know they would always try to you know tell me some things and and share some things with me that actually are are are, are some stuff that that I do remember and I take with me right now as well. So yeah, 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 wow. yeah. But then again, though, being young and being young and foolishness and full of that testosterone and energy, it was fun at sometimes, mm -hmm. and then sometimes it wasn't. Okay. So, what would you say as far as the new rappers now that's doing the same exact thing? Same type of lyrics and everything. That is bad, of course. You know, I, I still ain't heard nobody is use as much explicit language like Two Live Crew was. You know, what I'm saying back then. So for the rappers that's out now, <laughs> no, I'm serious, brother Marquise. I mean, I was, baby, I was jamming. I was jamming, but when I pulled up by the house, I had to make sure I turned it down so my yeah. mom and them didn't hear the music. That's right. You That's know. Right. But when we was out at the clubs, at the bars, at the, um, not the clubs, of course, but we would have right. halls right. and they would rent halls for us. And every time, no matter what we went to, yeah, our music came on. Yeah. And yeah. I'm, and I grew up, I, I'm in Atlanta right now, but yeah. I grew up in Michigan. Oh, okay. I grew, up, yep, I grew up in Michigan. Yep. In Saginaw. In Saginaw, Saginaw Michigan. Yeah, I love right by Flint. I love Michigan. I love Michigan. It's one of my yep. favorite, favorite states. Detroit, one of my favorite cities. Wow. Yep. That's where I grew up at. So we heard y'all music all the time, all the time. And it was booty shaking music. That's to right. To be honest, it was booty shaking music. You gonna get a workout each and every time. You ain't know you was getting a workout, but you was getting a workout. You was getting a workout. <laughs> And an earful at the same time. And an earful at the same time, exactly. You know, but um, what do you feel about the artist now that feels that this is the only way is to use profanity, is to use explicit language like this? This is the only way that they're going to make money because to be truthful, oh, I want to hear a little bit of cussing here and there. 
<laughs> a little bit of bad language. Well, it is what it is, and you know, I'm, I'm, I am glad to say that you know that I had went to the Supreme Court and won the ruling on censorship for the First Amendment rights for artists that came after me to really express themselves artistically and do not have to worry about being harassed by the establishment for the kind of material that they're putting out. So exactly. Here come a hand, here come a hand clap. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, here it comes, it's coming. But yeah. yes, you are right. And I applaud y'all for that. Because yeah. at the end of the day, you know, even like if I'm with my mom or you know, some of the music that I play on the show, my mom may be like, oh, that show was a lot of cussing or why does she got to do this? Because mostly they be the females that she really say something about. Right. And I tell her, you know, this is what they do. This is their this freedom of speech. Yep. They can say how they feel. Whether we agree with it or not, yep. you yep. know, they can say how they feel. Um, do we encourage to try something differently? Yes, we do encourage. Of course, that's the end goal. But to live crew, y'all went through. It wasn't no just no encouraging to y'all. Y'all didn't got arrested, um, and a lot of stuff happened. Mm -hmm. A lot of bad things. Mm -hmm. And it was a lot of cuss words. One pastor told me, he said, "I counted the cuss words on the nastiest they want to be double album, and it was over three hundred and seventy-five usages." of profanity. I was like, wow. Wow. Yep. <laughs> yep. Oh, wow. And, and, and that's and, on the whole album? Yep, yep. That's on the nastiest we want to be album. But as far as today's music, I mean, what we were talking about on the records now, some of the females come on stage and basically show you, show it to you. Yep have ex scrippers that have blew up and became American icons. Yeah. And then we have uh, like college students models. that rap, female college students that rap with hardly no clothes on, you yeah. know, uh, 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 and some of the material that they talk about is similar, is similar to what we were talking about. They get to do as female. And then we have some of the guys coming in with the criminality part of it, you know, uh, drill music, a lot of it's kind of like gang related. And you know, they talk about, you know, uh, 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 crime, committing crime and basically death, self-destruction. So it's good and bad, you know, it's good and bad, good and evil. And some might say it's a necessary evil because over here in America, we have the right to say and do basically what we please. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And he's right, you guys. We all have the right to say and do as we please. But a lot of our concern is the children. That's the right. Children viewing it, them seeing it. Yeah. Um, they all have cell phones seem like now. So mm -hmm. they can go on these cell phones, watch whatever they want to watch. Mm -hmm. But some parents seem to blame the artists, which I is a 50 50 with me. You know, That's right. I feel like you should always watch your child mm -hmm. and be in tune in what your child is doing. Yeah, you're right. right. There's a lot of probably killings that's going on with these young people that probably could be avoided if the parents would step up and do what they're supposed to do as parents. That's yeah. how I feel. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You're still going to have something that slip through the cracks. It all, st know? all starts, it, it all starts uh, uh, at home and it all starts the proper raising of the kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree one hundred percent. I agree one hundred percent. Now, do you have any children, brother Marquis? Yes, I have a daughter. I have a daughter. God damn! Graduated from college. But she has her own business. Damn, 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 damn! I had to use a split of language. Yeah. Uh, all the stuff you went through. Was you scared when you found out you was having a girl? <laughs> Yes, I was. Yes, I. <laughs> Fortunately, she 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 came out. She came out to be, and she's grown into be one hell of a woman. Awesome! They go to head clap. Hey! Shout out to brother Marquis' daughter, the awesome girl. <laughs> yeah, the girl name is um, Raven Ross. You can follow her on Instagram, Pilates by Raven. Uh, All right. 
had a she had a reality show on Netflix called Love Is Blind. I think she was on the second season, possibly. Uh, I think okay, she, yeah, yeah. So yeah, she's doing the thing. She's definitely doing the That's thing. She's out, awesome. travels around the world, and yeah, you know, she's. I'm really, I'm really proud. I'm really proud of her. That is awesome. That is so awesome. Um, now I'm finna say something. I don't know how you're going to feel about what I'm going to say, Brother Marquise. But one thing about me, I got to keep it 100 at all times, okay? Right. Yes, man. Now, I, I did some research. I did some research, and you went on somebody's show who I just don't like. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you, Vlad TV. Right. And I'm going to tell you why. And you tell me if I'm wrong in any type of way. But I find that it's so many people, black men, okay? We're going to leave the white folks out of this one. But black men that always go on that show, and it seems like they tell too much of their business, Brother Marquise. Like I said, I keep it 100. They tell too much of their business. And, it's, and when I say their business, I'm talking about incriminating stuff business yeah <laughs> and it's like how this man can sit here and get all this information out of y'all and I, it just don't make sense to me like they be saying some incriminating things on there to this man and he just asks it so freely now keep in mind some of them be high some of them be drunk all of that but still they still tell it you know <laughs> and I just don't understand how this man make folks feel so comfortable like that. Can you fill us in? Because maybe I maybe I'm not liking Vlad for a reason I should not be liking Vlad. But well, that's my whole that is my whole reason that he get these black celebrity men on there and he just had them spilling their goods of incriminating things. Okay, well, well, that was one. I think that was my second. Well, that was my biggest platform that. I've ever uh, had a chance to uh, get interviewed on. Oh yeah, uh, he's sitting at five point something million. <laughs> right. <laughs> I was prepared for the questions that he was going to ask me, but I wasn't prepared somewhat for some of the backlash that I was going to get. Uh, oh, okay. From, you know, from some of that, but you know, I wanted to tell my truth, and at that time, that was a platform that that was the biggest one and i just wanted to get you know some some parts of my story out so that's why i did it and he and he asked the he asked the 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 the, the incriminating questions as well as some of the good questions that i guess some other people with podcasts don't ask some of these guys but then again too you have to look a lot of the guys that come on vlad tv are like ex gangsters felons true Amps, you know, and 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 uh, been, been into the underworld, so to speak. So yeah, so that, they don't care. That's what, <laughs> get. that's what you're gonna get because you know they're ex felons now, and and a lot of them that 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 go on that particular podcast, or uh, all of that stuff is behind them. So I guess they feel free, feel free enough to share their experiences. You know, and ain't nothing wrong with sharing your experiences because you can possibly hurt, help somebody. I say hurt somebody. Yeah. Help somebody by sharing your experiences. And, and, and Vlad wasn't, uh, he wasn't all bad to me. He wasn't all bad to me. And No, your, your interview was perfect. And, and, and a lot of people, a lot of people after I did that interview said, yeah, we don't mess with Vlad. Vlad is the feds and the feds watch Vlad and he might tell on you. But then Vlad is interviewing people uh, 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 that are somewhat snitches. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? For I follow him and I, and, and I watch. So, you know, I, I, I thought that I answered the questions to the best of my ability. And, uh, you know, and that was what sure and that was <laughs> interview where I didn't want to hide anything. I yep. think you did an awesome job. Um, right. Like I said, I watched the interview. Um, I love the part when you, I don't say, I hate to say I love the part, but when you talked about um, Luke shooting at you, right. you know what I'm saying? I remember that part. And to me, you was able to break everything down right. um, in your 
in your tone, in your voice. You see what I'm saying? Right. Like, this is all the way you felt about the situation. Right. You know, um, a lot of stuff, like I said, I didn't even know. Well, yeah. I didn't know why the group was no longer together mm -hmm. um, with two, like, crew. Can you let everybody know that here? Because I know some people probably was wondering, like, what happened? Was it because a new era had came out and y'all just had to let go? No, we could have kept going because, you know, <clears throat> after, uh, after what, Nasty, Na I mean, uh, Sports Weekend, Pop That Coochie, I think that was our last album. And then we came back with uh, Friday couple of years after that which was a uh a, 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 which we were a part of a platinum album and that was a, a single uh that was a single that vit that did very well so we probably could have kept going it was just that at that time i think luke probably thought that we were becoming a burden to him because if you go back and look at a lot of uh two live crew stuff and like i had watched luke 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 uh did uh he did a little thing on uh he had a he had an interview on um little thing they did on um, on A and E channel and he said that we became jealous of him by not being mindful of the fact that I stuck in there and hung in there with him after he locked me in the pack jam and shot at me with AR fifteen full of blanks. Mm. So if you say that I was jealous of you, you shot at me, bro. I, at, at a young age, I still was an impressionable young man. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking for brotherhood. You looking at us like a lick. And if you still, and if you were to go back and look at some of the interviews that we had, like on Donahue, I'm on Donahue, and uh, especially Arsenio Hall, both times that we were on there, that uh, Big Brother Luke did not even let us participate in uh, those kind of interviews and that kind of publicity. Uh, 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 we only got a chance to participate in that perform and in, in, in those type of things performance wise. And you know, I put our senior hall name in the record, so you know, I feel as though I can hold a conversation with him on national TV. But Is it he, yeah, that's right. You know what I'm saying? It, it was a lot of little petty, childish things that were taking place that I was not comfortable with. So they labeled me as the troublemaker. But I still hung in there with you, bro, after you shot at you. And I still, I still uh, uh, I made Gucci Mama with you after you pulled the gun on me. So, and then when you kept, then when you kept that kind of uh, publicity away from us, I still was rocking with you. So I don't think that I was jealous of you. And it was more of a dislike than jealousy. But if you mix it all up into one, you can call it whatever you want to. But mm -hmm. but Luke, you know, I don't remember me asking Luke for anything like like on these many hands. I ain't really ask you for nothing. I didn't even really want nothing from you. But in exchange for all of that, you still shitted on me and, and, and drug us and treated us really bad. Like we were just uh, there in Florida to be used to help you with your shit. And we started off as brothers and we started off as business partners and all of that. But when all of the money i guess came about in the the controversy and all the attention and exposure came about you just tried to distance yourself from us and uh i didn't think that that was cool because uh -oh. all that we've been through how are you just going to try to take everything from two live crew and remember and remember now before the vlad interview luke would always get these interviews and say that he did everything that's my music i did everything that's my record company and I used to just listen to him for years. But what really brought me to the forefront of all of this, and you know, and, and I'm gonna start in mind all the things I might want to elaborate on, is is the way that he uh did China Man after he died. You know, BET was a little BET event in Miami, and they had a segment honoring China Man, honoring him. And Luke just took all of that for himself did not really honor China Man in the way that he was supposed to be honored by a fellow bandmate, even if you didn't like us or not, even if you, you know, had an idea to use us and enslave us, like you talk, like you always said, yeah, I'm slaving these niggas, these niggas is green, they come from California, New York and everything, they green and I'ma fuck them and I'ma nail them to the cross and fuck them, I'ma make their lives miserable. That was always his whole get down. 
uh, I didn't know if he was on some kind of like bad spirituality, bad spirituality, because a couple of times it was some weird shit that he would do. Like, I'm gonna take you, I'm gonna take y'all pictures in there to the root lady and have them throw some kind of voodoo on you. Then I would share rooms with him and I would wake up with like eight or 10 gold chains around me. And that was some weird shit. So I stopped fucking with him like that. <laughs> no, you didn't. You know what I'm saying? I <laughs> know you didn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm getting all of this, and they're like, yeah, we don't, they, they, they'll put, you know, I guess Lucas Bahamian or Jamaican, so, you know, they talk that old, that old voodoo shit, yeah, I'm gonna throw the root lady on you, I'm gonna put the roots on you, some bad spirits on you, and he was always talking that kind of boffet shit, like, I'm gonna nail a nigga to the cross, I'm gonna cross a nigga, I ain't gonna give a nigga no money, it was never, he never had nothing good to say, like, thank you, I apologize, excuse me, it was never none of that kind of shit, so, I, uh, so, when, on Luke, I picked up that vibe on Luke first quarter because when it, when Luke came and picked me up from the airport, I'm coming in from Rochester, New York. He pulled up to his mother's house and went in there and beat up his girlfriend. And I'm like, bro, I don't know. Got back in the car. I'm like, bro, I don't know you, man. You in that as black men, we don't supposed to beat up or we don't supposed to put our hands on black women. And it's just Miami. You know, said you got to do these bitches down here. <laughs> kind of shit so you know then 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 it was other things that was transpiring you know while we were on the journey to where i would see some of luke guys rape women and 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 they had made they thought that shit was kind of funny you know they'd slap a girl around and do the pick up in her hand and take her from door to door and that guys have their way with them and then they made a song about it called big man's pussy and i'm like these niggas is really really crazy and it's one more thing that i want to add to uh for brother luke because he might not look at this interview because he might not feel that he has enough uh, views for him to expound on what I'm saying. But if I were to jump on Vlad, you know, with five million uh, viewers and shit like mm -hmm, that, mm -hmm. he gonna have something to say. But uh, he made mention to, uh, in the uh, A&E interview, which uh, Nas narrated the interview. I'm a big fan of Nas, so I really commend it from doing right. for doing but Luke was like, uh, yeah, I didn't have no money to bury my mother. So my mother was dying. He sent me to New York to go uh, do a song with one of Russell Simmons groups called No Face. And I'm hanging out with Russell Simmons and, and I like Russell Simmons. That was one of the highlights of my career. And, uh, you know, they told me, yeah, make sure you get your uh, your your uh, your collaboration fee from Luke and all of that. And uh, Luke didn't even pay me for that collaboration for that feature. Uh, 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 but yet again, if he would have paid me for that feature or if he would have paid us the amount, our proper amount that we were supposed to be getting from all the shows, I could have been other real comfortably, but he never did do that. So like he was just whooping us all the way across the board and then talking about it. Yeah, the nigga couldn't bury his mama. That's because you couldn't pay me. If you would have paid me, if you would have paid me for that feature that I did, I could have buried my mama properly and you, and you wouldn't even had to come to the front or had anything to do with the burial of my mother. So I, I just wanted to expound on that. And you have a very beautiful mother. I met her. She was a very nice lady. She also slipped out and said, Luke is rotten and he's very selfish. And she also said, yeah, Luke, you ought to take care of that boy right in front of him. You know what I'm saying? These people ain't never did nothing for you. Did nothing. You, you need to stop, you know, treating people like that in, 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 in so many words, so to speak. So he was just a fucked up, dirty nigga from the get down. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, you know, we stuck in there. I stuck in I there. Used to, brother Marquis, we, are you still angry with him? Uh, Keep it one hundred. Keep it one hundred. He shot at, at me and pulled the gun on me, and I still fuck with him. And then he'll still get on. And then he'll still get on some of these interviews and tell a lie. So after the Vlad interview, and I'ma shut up. So he went live. He went live and trying to check you in with him. Shut up. Shut up. This is your He blocked me out. Told some lies that he didn't hit women. That that uh that he fight niggas. And yeah, he probably did. But I remember one time a female whooped his ass in his own nightclub. And so he was just telling a lot of lies, trying to make me feel, you know, trying to fuck me up because I went on Vlad, said that he don't know anything about Vlad, but he was on Vlad in 2015. So I'm just like right here, bro. All you got to do is just say you didn't give a fuck about us uh, because we weren't from Miami. You favored Miami people more than you favored us. We were the bread renting act on the label which was supposed to be all of our label together. 
and you just, you know, you just took everything from us, bro, and dogged us and dehumanized us as black men and fucked us around, but you're going to get on these interviews and lie about it. All you got to do is say, I got them niggas in Florida. We started a record label. I told them we was brothers and I loved them. And when the money and the fame came, I fucked them. And that just would have been it. That would have been it. That would have been it. Anyway. So, wow. That was a lot. I didn't know you were going to come out with all that. But, so yeah, who, therapy. did y'all start two therapy. live crew together? Pardon me? Did y'all start two live crew together? No, or did Luke start it first? No, two live crew was formed before I jumped in the group and before Luke got in the group. Oh, before both of y'all got in the group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I was always more loyal and more favorable to Mr. Mix because he kept his word and put me in the group. He was like, when anything pop up, anything pop up with this music shit, I'm going to holla at you. I'm going to put you in the group. I was in Rochester, New York in the dead of winter. He gave me a ticket to go to Miami. And unfortunately, all the bullshit started happening. But okay. we made we made history throughout that journey. So it Now, is the people of the group, you sure did make history. Everybody go through something. That's right. Everybody, Everybody go through something. Everybody go through something, but... You know, people need to talk about it more for the <laughs> healing for themselves and to show other people. American people the truth, bro. I mean, don't don't get on here and try to hide like you got a squeaky clean image like Jesus and the Obamas, which you don't. You know, just tell American people the truth. These people are watching. These people are watching these uh, uh, podcasts. They want to hear the truth, and people respect the truth. People, mm. respect the truth. somebody just pulled up on me last night and said they saw the Vlad interview for the first time. You know, so I got on I got on Vlad and I told the truth. You know, Luke gonna get on there and just say all kind of crazy shit about me and lie about the situation. Like, you know, he really gave niggas millions of dollars. It wasn't like that. It was not yeah. like that. Mm, mm, mm. Yep. Well, I'm sorry you had to go through all of that. I really am. All right, um, my, not over. You gotta go through something. Exactly. There you go. You ain't never lied about that. Well, I want to get into a little, uh, a small commercial break. Uh, when we come back, I told you that we do talk about crime on my show. Right. So I do want to show you a small little clip so we can touch on that just as well, okay? All right. So, so uh, yeah. huh? How long is the break going to be? Oh, just probably about two minutes. Right. <laughs> if that. Right. I'm going to go use the bathroom and I'm going to come back. Okay. All right. All cool. right. Okay, y'all. We're going to get into another commercial. Um, I apologize, y'all, for the explicit language. But, you know, like he said, this is healing for him. You know what I'm saying? So I applaud him for coming on here, telling his truths, you know, because a lot of us want to know what happened with Two Live Crew. So um, let's get into this little quick commercial. Hey y'all, it's your girl, the missus, the missus with the kisses, baby. Y'all enjoying the show? Is y'all enjoying the show, baby? We are getting it in each and every Monday, 9 p.m. Eastern. We are on Roku TV. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube page. Make sure you follow me on my Facebook pages and also Follow me on Twitch and IG just as well, baby. Each and every Monday. Each and every Monday. We're all solo, dolo, baby. Unless I got a special guest. But I love y'all so, so much. It's so important that you share these videos. So please continue to share. I love you all. Bye. Show. 
confused with smiles for signs of a weakness. I inherit it because of my meekness. And understanding comes to those who speak less. I took some time to be alone who I belong to. I find it hard to trust a man who don't know the truth. Learn the lessons from all the seasons I've been through. And I'm grateful to you, I'm faithful. I listen to sweet sounds of the ocean. So Thank you guys. Thank you so much. Um, I must say this. Um, my hey, not PGT time. Um, uh, I'm trying to fix my hair. Yeah, there it over there. When I started PGT time, um, I was at the radio station. I was at the radio station. Um, I love music, all types of music. So that's why I play music on my show. That's why I have artists on my show, celebrity artists and independent artists. And I had put on my page that, um, thank you, Lisa, that it will be explicit language tonight. It's too live crew. What the hell y'all thought? <laughs> I love you, Carmen. I love you, baby. I love you, love you, love you. But sometimes we don't have those type of shows. And it's sometimes needed on my platform just as well. We talk about a lot of crime. And you best believe during that crime, they say some cuss words, baby. They be cussing them. So that's why some of them be dead because they get to cussing at them. Because they'll talk to them like they got some sense. You know? So, again, I'm so, so honored. I am so honored. I wouldn't care if Brother Marquise came up here and sung his songs. <laughs> so like her, baby. I am honored. I'm thankful that he is here, like he said, is healing for him just as well, just for him to talk about this. Just imagine, just imagine all these years, Brother Marquis, and I'm not saying that he's been thinking about it all the time. I'm not saying that. But there are some things that he has held on to. Yes. And he wants to come on and talk about it. And I'm all for it, okay? So he's still back there in the bed. I'm um, getting this stuff together, y'all. But I hope y'all are enjoying the show. Um, this is this is big, y'all. This is big, okay? This is really, really big to have Brother Marquis on the show tonight. I am, I am just overjoyed, so overjoyed. But uh, he's back down there. We're gonna bring him back up, baby, because I love him already, baby. I love him already. <laughs> Look, I love him already. You know, look, yeah, he said he got brushed teeth. <laughs> yeah, I got to be on there. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Now, when was the last time that you literally had a full conversation with Luke? I've never had a conversation with him. Uh, last time we was together, we was we was uh, teaming up with some with a with a lawyer for some legal stuff that we're into and always was into and. Uh, he still was trying to come off, you know, with that old 1980s Wooly Bully game. So he hasn't changed uh, the way that he feels about me nor two live crew. I guess he feels though I took advantage of y'all before. So every time I talk to you, I'm going to say something slick to you. You know, like last time we did a concert, when we did Club Live and... Uh, uh, the funk fest, you know, he only he only comes out and messes with two live crew when it's uh financially feasible for him or when he gets in some IRS trouble. But yeah, he'll pop up on me and be like, Yeah, me so uh me so homeless. So I was like, wow. next, so next when, time, was, when did y'all do the fest, the music fest? Uh, when I, I'm not good with dates, uh, but yeah, we did do the funk fest and uh, it was cool, it was cool. It's, it was never no conversation with Luke. Luke ain't never had no conversation with me. Never told me nothing good, uplifting, or edifying. Or, you know, he's older than me. He never gave me any kind of words of encouragement or nothing. It was always on some 
and shit. Like, yeah, I got your money, nigga. Fuck you. Get on down the road. What you still doing in Miami? You ain't from here. And then he'll pop up. I made a song called uh, I Am Florida. He'll pop up. He'll pop up on my page talking about you ain't from Miami and, you know, all kind of old shit. All yeah, kind of nigga stuff. Yeah, all kind of old childish nigga and shit. So, you know, that's him. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> now, and everybody, it wasn't like nobody knew who you was, Brother Marquise. You know, like, I mean when I told people, two like, that's who I got coming on the show. Two like crew. The first thing they said was, uh, Brother Marquis coming on. <laughs> <laughs> like, so many people knew exactly who you was. So yeah. it's not like you was riding his coattail or anything like that. No, you it wasn't because, yeah. your own name. People knew you. Right, because I was the first rapper on all of the records. <laughs> uh, yep. First yep. rapper on all of the records. And I thank Mr. Mix for that. I thank Mr. Mix for that. So I'm on all of the records. So you know. now the members was Fresh Kid Ice. Right. Who is deceased at this time. Right. Um, DJ Mix. Mr. Mix, yep. Yeah. Um, you, Brother Marquis. And unfortunately, and yeah. Say say that again. And unfortunate Luther Luther Campbell, Luke Skywalker. <laughs> Uncle Luke. Well, before I even said it. Unfortunately, Luke. <laughs> Now, you feel like he owes you guys some funds. It's so is much. Is that what it is? The money. It's so much wasn't about the money. It's just the way that he did it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's the way that he did it. You know, everybody you come around, you know, the Miami guys. Yeah, I'm taking these nigga money. These niggas ain't shit. I'm taking these niggas money. They green. Fuck these puss ass niggas. These fuck niggas. It was just the way that he fucking did it. I wasn't begging him for nothing, no way. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. The way that he did it, you know what I'm saying? He didn't make no bones about it. You know, it's like he he took pride on uh, dehumanizing us and fucking us around financially. That's just kind of dude he is. Well, you know, I got to ask this question then. You know, I got to ask. Right. Why go along with it? Was it because of the fame? Or... Because of the little bit of money, or because I don't know if y'all getting a little bit of money or a lot of money back then. Uh, what what was the main reason why you went along with it when you knew he was dying? Right, right. Yeah, 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 and uh, yeah, and that's a, that's the a question that I asked myself too. You know, uh, but now after my mother passed, I got away from it. So you know, I had the responsibility. Even my mother took really good care of me, so that was the way that I could support her with what we were getting, and that's what I did. That and that's now, what, are you getting any royalties now? Can you tell yeah, us? That? Yeah, yeah, I get some royalties right now. Yeah, I get royalties. Okay. Right I get royalties. Yeah, well, that's good. Yeah. Now, when did the royalties start? As soon as y'all was done, or it was later on down years down the line? Mm, well, the ro royalties started. Well, the royalties started coming as far as the blue checks, probably in about like 90. 90, 89, 90, as far as the blue checks were concerned. Yeah. Okay. okay. I think the yeah. I ever got like 27,000. Yep. Like 27,000. Yep. Yeah, like 27,000. I think it was another one for like 16 and all kind of shit. It was a million dollar tour, band in the USA tour, which he tricked us, which he, which he tricked us and fucked us around on that. Gave me twelve thousand dollars off of a million dollars. Yeah, yeah, we need to see your face. So can you push? Your, yeah, yeah. Push so, your back yeah. Yeah. So it was some royalties. It was some royalties, and let him tell it. Let him tell it. Since he gave us peanuts, what he always said, "I'm giving them niggas peanuts." Let him tell it. You know, he did a hell of a lot for us. Mm. But he really didn't. He really didn't. Now, do you feel like this is something that you didn't realize until later on in life? Once uh, Two Live Crew was. No, 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 we realized it because you you have to think, you know, we tried to sue Luke. We tried to sue Luke for everything, me and Mr. Mix and Chinaman. But, you know, Luke being the snake and I guess Chinaman wanted to have more notoriety. Chinaman fucked up the case. China Man, China Man was Fresh Kid Ice. Yeah, Fresh Kid Ice okay. fucked up the case for us. So he didn't stick with me and Mr. Mix. He went over there with Luke. So it kind of fucked up the case. Then Luke went to bankruptcy. Luke got thrown into bankruptcy. And uh, China Man went to court that day in which uh, the bankruptcy court had granted us the name back. 
but China Man went and made a, 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 a dirty, shitty move with Joe Weinberger and sold Joe Weinberger the name. So, uh, you know, I don't want to too much expound on what China Man did because, you know, he died and I still had a lot of love for him. Yeah. But yeah, you know, it was, it was just, you know, Luke fucked us and then China Man came about and uh, fucked us too for his own uh, personal reasons and I guess his own financial gain or whatever. But yeah, it was just a bunch of bullshit. Wow. Which is, so we could have owned the name. The bankruptcy court granted us the name back. Luke gave us the name back, but China Man sold it to a Jewish dude, Jewish homosexual people. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and that's that. That's basically that. <laughs> <laughs> baby, all they all pitch tea time, baby. All they all pitch tea time. All they all pitch tea time. I love it. I love it. I can't believe you just said that. Well, okay. Now, move right along. <laughs> we finna go ahead. I want to show you this clip, okay? Um, mm -hmm. Like I said, I do discuss crime on the show. Right. Um, after we discuss this clip, y'all. Uh, we're going to get into our game, Rapper's Delight, okay? And That's then after name. Rapper's Delight, we're going to ask you a few more questions. And then we'll be in the show, baby. I'm enjoying you, Brother Marcus. I'm enjoying you, too. I really, really am. Okay, <laughs> let's get into uh, this next clip. We got to pay our fair use of y'all. We got to. We got to make sure this video stay. Here we go. Warning. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce distribute or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 USC 107. So breaking, three students from Langham Creek High School arrested, and the moment is caught on camera. The Harris County Sheriff's Office now launching an investigation based on what that video shows. ABC 13's Maya Shea is outside the school with what we know tonight, Maya. Yeah, it's important to know we're here at the Sheriff's Department because the investigation here is ongoing. But this incident happened last week when a young man by the name of Christopher Willis had run out of gas. So he did what any high school senior might do, call his friends. They showed up at where his car was stuck, which is at 529 in the Copperfield neighborhood. And at that point, Sheriff's detectives showed up and tried to pull the kids over. What happened after that is caught on cell phone video. And as you're about to see, the young man in question, I actually talked to him today, he said he was in fear of his life. Oh, hey, I'm, I'm the cell phone video shared by a concerned dad on Facebook shows a Langham Creek High School senior being pulled out of his car and then thrown to the ground. Seth Palumbo was on his way to get gas for a friend whose car was stalled out on 529. But the video shows Harris County Sheriff's deputies aggressively pulling Palumbo out of his own car while his two friends recorded the incident. This afternoon, the Harris County Sheriff's Department released a statement in part after reviewing the videos. We are investigating the incident to determine if any policies and procedures were violated. One deputy has been temporarily reassigned pending the outcome of the investigation. We take these matters seriously and will ensure a thorough investigation is completed in a timely manner. And actually two out of those three uh, kids were charged with crimes. Uh, Christopher Willis, the kid who ran out of gas, it's on here. He's charged with misdemeanor for impeding a roadway, basically for being stuck in the middle of 529. The other young man, the young man you saw on the video, Seth Palemo, he has a more serious charge. He has a felony charge for uh, assaulting a peace officer. I spoke to him at length today. He is a young man who says he's trying to make it to college and he's worried that all of this uh, will really distract him from that. His parents are exceedingly upset, but because they are facing serious criminal charges, their family attorney has advised them not to speak on camera for now, but they have certainly, as you can imagine, a lot of strong opinions. We're live downtown, Maya Shea, ABC 13. 
All right, Brother Marquise, let me start off. Let me start off. Then I let you say what you got to say. Uh, this is how I feel about this bullshit. <laughs> I feel that it's two different. I go, it's two different ways, okay? As far as the police officer, we all know that police do a lot of police brutality to black right. men. Right. That's different. You know, um, it's something that we are trying to get stopped. Um, but it seems like we're failing at it, to be honest, because they're study doing the same crap to us. Study doing it. Now, as far <laughs> as on the other side, Brother Marquis, I'm sure them officers told him to get out the car. Right. They didn't just pull him out. They probably told him, get out the car first. And I feel like parents need to tell, talk to these kids. You know, we're watching the news as adults. But what if these kids isn't watching the news to see that these officers will blow your head off right then and there? Right. So I'm saying, <clears throat> what they tell you to do, let mama and daddy figure it out afterwards. If they send you to jail, you go to jail. Mama and daddy will come get you. Somebody will come get you. You'll get out. But don't sit there and fuss and cuss and fight with the police officers because you don't want to be handcuffed and go to jail when you know you ain't did nothing wrong. If you know you ain't did nothing wrong, stand on it. True enough, stand on it. But at the same time, you have to do what these folks tell you to do, unfortunately, because it could cost you your life. Right. Okay, go ahead. <clears throat> That's all I want to say on it. Well, you know, sometimes uh, parents uh, do not have that black man police talk with their kids. Yes. You know, it's a certain way that uh, black people <clears throat> especially black men have to uh, interact with the police. Now think too, some of these police officers are coming home from, you know, uh, the military such as Afghanistan, Iraq. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, a lot of police are scared. A lot of police are scared of black men, especially yeah. the black youth nowadays. So they're already, you know, pulling you over you know, thinking, you know, thinking the worst because they're trained that way. So if we don't comply to what they're suggesting that we should do on a minor traffic stop, then the whole shit gets blown out of proportion and it and it turns into something dangerous. Exactly. Exactly. I agree with you 100 percent. Mm -hmm. um, what do you suggest that these young people do when they get pulled over by a police officer? You know, if you don't have the problem, just be cool. You know, you got a brand I got pulled over the other day, and I'm like, hey, how you doing, officer? What's going on? You got your license? Yeah, you know I got my license. Bam, all right. Check my license. I can go. It's a way that you have to interact with the police. <clears throat> now, back in the days when I was a teenager in uh, Riverside, California, the police picked me up and uh, yeah, called me all kind of monkeys and everything. Took me downtown and the whole nine. <laughs> Yeah, so it all depends on the individual. It depends on the police, the character of the police, and it depends on the character of the suspect as well. Exactly. Now, just like they say dogs smell fear, right? I feel like officers smell fear just as well. Yes. So sometimes, and I'm not, I'm not even going to say sometimes, a lot of the times, a lot of us is just scared. Yeah, we're fearful. Point. Yeah, other like, police, especially black, can, because we yeah. have because we have a history of being brutalized by the law enforcement, and you got to think the police, the police, you know, came about you know right after slavery to go and keep an eye on the slaves, keep an eye on the ex-slaves or whatever, you know, and just keep an eye on black people. They were they were slave patrollers, the mm. police. So you know, all exactly. and that brotherhood, they still try to carry that shit on, but fortunately now. We got we got camera phones and people are filming, you know, minor traffic stops and 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 any kind of thing that the police are doing out here uh, 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 with black people and anybody and anybody uh, uh, as far as that goes. Exactly. So they're not getting away. So they're not getting away with a lot of shit that they used to get away with before technology. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Now, as far back to the fear, um, when you have people that basically have nothing to be fearful of like myself 
I'm not finna ride around with drugs in my car. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't do drugs. You right. know, I'm not finna ride around with illegal weapons in my car. Because right. my weapons are registered. Right. You know what I'm saying? But, Brother Marquise, I'm still scared when the police lights come behind me. Sometimes my kids could be in the backseat playing with a light and I get I jump and get scared. Like, oh my gosh, it's the police. I've never been to jail before. Ever. Right. right. Been brutalized by the police. But it's just some people out here that is fearful of the police. And a lot of young people are just as well. So the reason why I'm saying this is if you're going to sit there. Now, if I'm telling you that we all are scared of the police and they smell the fear, why ride around with drugs in your car? Why ride around with a suspended license? Why ride around with weapons in your car? And you know you're not even supposed to have with be around weapons. You know, why ride around with weed in your car when you know it's not legal in your state? Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Hey man, uh that that's how it is out here on the streets. It you is. Know, how it, it is. is. It's always been like that. And and you know, and you can ride around with, with weed and drugs and, and illegal guns and everything and be cool and the police don't even mess with you, but you know You're right. sometimes You're right. police will pull you over when you got everything on you. <clears throat> Now, you do know that um, in Detroit, it's legal. Yeah, right. It's legal. And not only is it legal, um, it's legal for recreational, too. Right. Yeah, Detroit. You have, know? Yeah. Yeah. They have the uh, they have the dispensaries in Detroit. Exactly. <laughs> they have dispensaries in a lot of places. Yes, they do. Know? But yeah. even in Detroit or some of these other places where it's legal at you still got people locked up in jail for it <laughs> like what sense does that make <laughs> i i think from from what i gather off of the news i think it's still a state law and it's still some type of federal law like the state might be a little bit more lenient okay it's cool you can use marijuana and you can have up to an ounce on you you can go in a dispensary and get it but something to do with all of that bullshit the federal the federal part of the law doesn't feel like that so i don't know some political shit <laughs> exactly but i'm gonna show you something brother marquise i don't know if you watched my show on i don't think you did but i played this on my show on friday friday was 4 20. was it friday mm -hmm. i think it was friday i played this it was 4 20 friday no it was 4 21 was on friday yeah. so let me make sure. Yeah, 421 was on Friday, and I have a show every Friday, me and my husband. So I played this clip. Hilarious to me. Hilarious. My mama said, because my mama watches the show too. She on here. She said, hey. <laughs> and my, we call her Mama Peach. We call her Mama Peach on the show. Peach. <laughs> now, when I show Mama Peach and everybody this clip, Mama Peach was like, this is a hot mess. But I'm gonna let you watch this, okay? I want you to watch it. This is 420 in Detroit. On the news. I'm here on the west side of Detroit celebrating 420 day. It is a, uh, hey, J J <laughs> It's a beautiful thing, man. Beautiful thing. Smoke it on the news. Smoke it, man. Hit it, Charlie. You hit it, man. Hit it, Charlie. <laughs> that holiday, 420, April 20th, celebrating everything hot. How are you celebrating it today? Like this, you know what I'm saying? Smoking weed, you know what I'm saying? Get out. <laughs> yeah. Everybody on the bus. Like many on the weed bar bus from Eastern Market to here. It's first stop at the Detroit Herbal Center on Detroit's west side. Free weed, who wants the weed? And many happy that this year, smoking pot for recreation is legal. And business is good. Business been good. Yeah, you making you know money? I can't complain. Is it cheaper now? Heck yeah, way cheaper. I'm saying like the gang saturated now. So like 
everybody can afford it. And further on the west side, on the corner of Warren and Greenfield, the Herbalist Cannabis Company is celebrating. 420, the holiday uh, that only matters to a lot of people in Detroit. 420, 420, all the time. It's not just today, it's mostly every day. And with all this pot, most places are giving away free burgers or Cinnabons or sandwiches. How was it? Charlie, listen to me. I ain't gonna lie to you. Amazing. You gotta grab one of them Jones. So, with the munchies satisfying, feeling good, it's back on the weed bus for another 420 celebration in the D. Look at me, Ma. I made it. On Detroit's West Side, Charlie Langton, Fox 2. <laughs> I love our black people. I oh. love our black people, baby. I love our black people. <laughs> you know, just a few years ago, just a few years ago, we look. No smoking, brother Marquis, smoking on the news. I'm smoking weed on the news. <laughs> baby, he said it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. And you know why it's a beautiful thing? Because just a few years ago, they had to do this. Yeah. Yep. They had to get the hell off. Oh, yeah, yeah. I love it. I love it. Look, Bob. Look, Bob. I made it. I'm smoking. He said he made it. <laughs> Wait a minute. I like when the other dude said, business is good. Business is good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They giving out free hamburgers and and and, and uh, to all the people with the munchies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, they went big. They, they went the big. They forgot the edible, so I ain't even see nobody drinking nothing. They were just straight smoking. Uh, they were straight smoking. That's it. They were like, or we been, look, they banned alcohol. <laughs> Give a shout out to the west side of Detroit. I'm going to be in Detroit on Thursday. <laughs> yeah, he said, he said, have me so ready. Have me so ready. <laughs> All right. Now, we must play our game before we leave tonight. We got to play our game, Rapper's Delight. Um, I told you all about Rapper's Delight. Yes, I love this game. My viewers love this game just as well. It's just unfortunate that we only play it on Saturdays because that's usually when my artists come. So it's special for you tonight, though, because you legendary, baby. You legendary. So we're going to go ahead and play it on a Monday night. Thank okay? you. Thank you. You are so welcome. You are so welcome. Now, we must put up our statements. Here are our peachy statements. Mm -hmm. um, number one is... I be her baby daddy. I be her baby daddy. Yeah, yeah this is all again. He ain't nobody. He just my baby daddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Off record for real. I heard that the other day on Friday as a yeah. matter of fact, the booty mix on the radio. Yep. yep. Ain't nobody. <laughs> just my baby daddy. That's just my baby daddy. <laughs> I, I remember that song like it was yesterday. Yeah, I don't know the artist though. I don't know the artist, but I know that song. I think it was a guy and a girl on that song together. Yeah, I think it was. Um, but I, I can't remember their name either. But yeah. that was a song that was out big, just like y'all songs was. Right. Uh, which I do have the names written down. Some of the names written down. I wanna rock. I wanna rock. I wanna rock. Yeah. I, that was my Oprah. Yeah. Thanks out to Devastator. He made that beat for Uncle Luke. Uncle Luke. Okay. Yeah, I got um, out. Hoochie Mama. Hoochie Mama, that was me. My song, I made that. The hooks and everything. That's my record with me and Mr. Mix. Okay. Um, Shake a Little Something. Uh, Shake a Little Something was my record. I made that up again. The hook. The hook. China Man just added his verse in there with Mr. Mix on the music. Yep. All right. And Get a Girl. Get a Girl. Yeah, get it. The girl was my song. I got that from my uh, deceased auntie, one of my favorite aunties. Uh, I used to hang around with her while she was playing cards and dominoes, talking smack to her girlfriends. And she was like, get it, girl. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and that's how I got that one. Yep. Okay. Uh, me So Horny. Yeah, Me So Horny. Yeah, that's my song, too. I wrote that song in its entirety. I told Mr. Mix what to do uh, to the record, to put the record together, and that was that was our biggest record. That was our biggest record. I was record. just about to say, these are hits that that's you're right. saying that you wrote. That's right. Yep. Yep. Wow. Uh, pop that coochie. Oh, that, that was China. that wasn't the name of the song. <laughs> yeah, that was China Man's record right there. Yeah, he brought that okay. out of the table, and uh, that's my favorite. That's my favorite two hour crew song. Wow. Yeah, my own. I boy. think mine is uh, my favorite one is I Wanna Rock. That's mm -hmm. my favorite one, and then I would have to go with um Get It Girl. Next. Right. Yeah. Yep. And then hey, we want some. Mm, mm. Right. <laughs> yeah. Can't leave that one out. <laughs> 
Yes. Nasty is degrading as that one sounded right there. You know, that came from Big Mouth Luther himself. <laughs> that one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I wrote all the lyrics. Too, but I wrote all the lyrics. Yeah, but I wrote all the lyrics. Too. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Well, congratulations. Congratulations. You know, because at the end of the day, regardless of the lyrics, you that guy still made history That's in right. the hip hop community. That's right. Exactly. That's what it's all about. Right. That's yeah. right. On now, the so, that music. There yep. you go. Now. We have I'll be her baby daddy. Um, I'll marry her just because, just because I'll marry her just because. Um, number three. Yep, number two is I'll marry her just because. Okay, I number see. Number three is I got a collab. I haven't heard that one. I'm not. I'm not um, number four, she can be one of the two live crew dancers, and okay. number five. She can come to a two live crew room. Okay. So <laughs> yeah, these, these aren't songs, these are statements. Right. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you one person. And mm -hmm. what I did was I found the people what they looked like back then. Right. Okay. Yes, what they looked like back then. Okay. So they look a little young, but <laughs> you was young back then too. Okay. So here go the first person. That's yo yo. Yo, yeah, that is yo yo Yolanda Whitaker. Yes, Yolanda yeah. Whitaker. Yo yep. yo. Yeah, yo yo. What time? Big shouts out to L.A. South Central. She went to school. With, she went to school middle school with my cousin. All I right. Yep, I seen her in the yearbook. I and told you, you gonna know all these people. Sir Jinx. Yep. <laughs> now, which one would you give yo yo? I'll be her baby daddy. I'll marry her just because. I, I got a collab with her. I got a collab. I got a collab with Miss Yo Yo. Yeah, yeah. I got All a right. Yo Yo. Yeah. Okay, so he is collabing with Yo Yo. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna take out. I got a collab. So because you can't use it again. Yes, ma'am. So we're gonna take it out. All right, and we're gonna move on to the next person. The next person. You ready for the next person? Yes, ma'am. When I tell you this girl sliding through, she sliding through like a little leprechaun. She in all green, baby. All green. Oh, that's little, little Kim. Kim. That's little Kim. That's yeah, that's little Kim. Kim back then. That's little yeah. Kim back then. <laughs> little Kim, she was sexy back then, yeah. So, yeah, so little Kim was definitely sexy back then. Yeah. She was doing her thing. You Female wanna rapper. Yeah, yeah. She says you got some pretty eyes in the Brooklyn accent. You want to talk? You want to mm -hmm. talk? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So which one would you, what statement would you give for Lil' Kim? I'll be her baby daddy. Uh, i marry her just because. She can be one of the two live crew dancers. Or uh, she can come to the two live crew room. Uh, come to the two live room because I was on the floor with her when we had concerts together with Big Mr. Mix Biggie Smalls. I was on the floor with her. I had a I think wow. I had a Colombian girl with me at that time, so I really wasn't paying too much attention to her. But I always thought she was sexy and she was short and cute. Short and cute. I, I told y'all this is a legendary <laughs> show. Okay, <laughs> we have a legendary person on the show tonight, and this is celebrity edition. Okay, he said he knew Lil Kim. But he just wasn't checking for her at the time. Because <laughs> he had somebody else at the time that he was checking for. <laughs> so we got to go. We got to go with number five. Number five is out of the park, baby. So what we got left is I be her baby daddy. I marry her just because. And she could be one of the two like crew dancers. All right. So here go the next person. Oh, Queen, uh, that's, uh, no, that's, uh, Roxanne Shantae. Look at you. Yeah. I know you would know all these people. Damn it. I knew it. <laughs> yeah, that is Roxanne Shantae. Now, what do you know about Roxanne Shantae? He's a beautiful person. Shani's a beautiful person. I enjoy her in the car on satellite. She's a beautiful human being. Uh, 
So, yeah. so far, these all the people, women that I have shown, you've met these Greek women before? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. It shows uh, the back in the days. Awesome. Yep. Awesome. Well, I think I, I did I, my thing then. <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, what now, right? what we have left is I'll be her baby daddy. Mm -hmm. I'll marry her just because. Yeah. And uh, she can be one of the two live crew dancers. So, uh, I got a lot of respect for Shani. I know she married right now, but probably back then I probably would have married her. And we probably would have had some kids. She, <laughs> she wasn't playing none of that two live crew dancer shit. Don't try her like that. <laughs> you probably get slapped and cussed out. <laughs> it's like she get she cussed yeah, out. Playing, yeah, yeah, she ain't playing. <laughs> so you're gonna go with I marry her just because? Yeah, that's that'd be little wifey back then. I know she's married right uh, now. Big shouts out yeah. to her family and her beautiful family and her kids and her husband. Awesome, awesome. Hey, Roxanne Shantae. Honey, <laughs> right there, yeah. <laughs> yes. All right, so we took that one away. So you have two left. Um, I'll be her baby daddy, and she can be one of the two live crew dancers, okay? So let's take down Roxanne Shantae. We got two people left, and here go the next person. Uh, that is, uh, has to be right there. I think that is, oh, I think I've seen her too. Uh, Money in the Middle. Yep. Money yeah. Love, baby. Yeah. That is Money Love. Money, Money Love. Oh, definitely be her baby. That Money's sexy. Money is sexy. I seen her in Miami at Publix. She was in there. I was shopping and she was getting kids. I didn't know she lived in Miami. She was getting groceries for the kids. And she is what? still, she is still beautiful with that sexy British accent. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I think she got a radio show, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Money in the Middle. Yep, yep. I seen her at Publix. I seen her at Publix. Yep. She still, she still looks good. She still looks. Wow. Good. Mm -hmm. I always thought That's she was sexy, awesome. little sexy, short little thing. Yep. Yeah, everybody loved Money Love. Um, she was dope back in the day, yeah. just yeah. as well. Um, mm -hmm. like I said, she's still doing her thing on radio, allegedly. Um, uh, right now, so shout out to Money Love. Shout out to Money, Money Love. Now, our last person. This is our last person, and you have to pick number four for the last person, which is she can be one of the two live crew dancers. Are you ready for this? Yeah, brother yeah. love. Are you ready for your last person? Yes, ma'am. I am. Here we go. You know her. Oh, that's Queen Latifah. <laughs> Definitely not gonna be one or two like Ruchi already got a gun. Definitely not. Look, look, she ain't Queen even of, going Queen, for it. Queen, 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 yeah, that's Auntie right there. Queen Latifah. She cool. She cool. Who you calling the bitch? So whenever, exactly. whenever I saw Queen Latifah, I made sure I was on my perfect gentleman shit for her. <laughs> she's a beautiful human being. Yeah. She's a beautiful being she's a beautiful human being yep yep, yep. Yes. yeah so <laughs> all these ladies that we have i have shown you tonight you have been in the presence of these ladies yeah um, been on the this game was truly just for fun but yep, i yep. know that you have yep. nothing nothing but good things to say about each oh, and every one of these ladies all of those ladies are beautiful phenomenal and they did they think and you know queen latifah has went on man to become you know big in movies and film yeah. yep and uh man man uh roxanne shante holds down the satellite the satellite yeah. and love money love is you know like a, a housewife soccer mom type she's still beautiful lil kim is still gorgeous as well i think she's married so big yeah. shots her family yeah. and her kids exactly i don't know if she's married but i know she got a little girl Right. Um, I think her name is Royalty or something like that. Right. I can't remember. But right. um, I, I really studied these young ladies and really wanted to make sure that um, I came across some young ladies that was back in your day. And yeah. people like, well, what you mean back in his day? Back in his day like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back, back in his day like this. Yeah, I was young and wild back then. Move something. Yeah, there I go. Yeah. Back in his days, like this. Uh mm huh. -hmm. You can look at Back some of the. You can look at some of the 
Cause me and Luke were never really hardly standing by each other, or nothing. Uh, uh, I'm nothing. Be by Mr. Mix. He the one that put me in the group, kind of protecting me from Luke. <laughs> <laughs> now, what I want you to do is, when I show this next picture, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Uh, now that probably was a good, uh, good time. I think that's probably we were at the MTV, the MTV Awards in that year. We had all of that controversy, but they kind of twisted it around to make it seem like it was all about Madonna, which I didn't care nothing about. And at, uh, I met the Kennedy. I met the Kennedy daughters that year. Uh, okay. I think Luke tried to get Janet Jackson's attention and she would never come out of her trailer. <laughs> <laughs> I remember we were on stage with MC Hammer and we were singing a song, Band in the USA and Damon Wayman stood up in support of us, and that was cool. Wow. Yes, wow. Man. Okay, I got one more picture to show you, and you tell my man, me, China man, that's my man, China man. God bless, he did. He had all them gold teeth in his mouth. Yes, I see a yep. whole lot of it. <laughs> yep. Now, what about this picture? Uh, yeah, that's a good picture. That's a good picture of me right there. I probably ain't. Yeah, I was a little bit too close to Luke. I ain't like that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't with you. I just can't. He's a little too close to Luke. He yeah. ain't like that. He ain't like that. <laughs> yes. And then we got one more picture. That's a nice one right there. It was a nice one. It was a nice one. Yeah. Yeah. So they just took that picture right there. Luke, that wasn't Luke's album right there. That was something they put together. That was a compilation. That was a compilation. Probably shake a little comp shake a little something compilation. But yeah, I remember that picture as well. That was uh that photo shoot was, we had that photo shoot when we did the cover for uh, Nasty As We Want To Be. So that was some of those pictures. Yeah. Wow. Was there anybody out of the four of y'all, was there anybody in the group that said, okay, we can't do this. We can't do this. We can't do these lyrics. We can't, we gonna get a lot of backlash. Was there anybody? I was young and goofy and having fun, you know, and, mm -hmm. and mother approved of it, so it was a goal for me. Mm -hmm. I used to have those conversations with her. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. Yep. That's awesome. Yep. Well, we have came to the end of the show. I have really, really, really enjoyed you, Brother Marquise, tonight. Mm -hmm. So, so much. Mm -hmm. um, but before we go, um, I do want to... I always have my artists or my guests that come on my show. I always have them in the show, okay? Which means I pull myself down and you're going to be the only person up there on the screen. Um, but I also tell them what I want them to come up with, with what they're going to talk about. So this is what I want you to do. Now, I want you to stay on for about at least three minutes yes, after I end the broadcast so that I can talk to you, you know, off the air. Okay. But this is what I want you to do. I want you to talk to Uncle Luke. Say how you really, really feel. You don't want to do that? Mm -hmm. Just say how if, you really feel. If I was to do that and be heartfelt, he going to make sure he skip over this interview, oh. which I know is lovely secretary. If somebody watching it, somebody going to tell him. But you know. He said he, he going to skip over. He going to skip over. <laughs> he gonna well, skip this over. Is, well, you know what? If he, don't wanna hit nothing, he don't want to hit nothing heartfelt or nothing. Nothing. That's just him. Especially towards me. He don't want to hit none of that. But like this soft nigga ass, he'll put ass nigga on there crying. That's the first thing gonna come out of his mouth. <laughs> yeah. Oh my well, this is what I want you to do then. This is what I want you to do. Because you still gotta end the show. You still gotta end the show. So what I want you to do is talk to the youth that's out there trying to break barriers just as well for the next um era that's mm -hmm. coming up behind them. Okay? Right. So that's what I want you to talk to them, you know, know how you feel as far as, you know, don't let nobody stop you from what you're doing. You know, this is right. what you truly believe in. Right. You know, like y'all. You know what I'm saying? Y'all right. still still right. stood ten toes down on y'all music. At the end of the day, whether y'all agreed on anything or not, you still stood ten toes down at yeah. the end of the day. And that's one thing that you all agreed on that y'all can say whatever y'all want to say. It's a free world. And y'all made it be known. You know what right. I'm saying? So 
I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to let you have the floor. Thank you guys so much for watching PGT Time. You already know where you can find me at on all platforms. I hope you enjoyed this interview. And again, Brother Marquise, I'm so honored to have you on here. I would love to have you back again one day in the future. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to let you end the show. Now, don't you hang up. You make sure you stay on till we until I end the broadcast so I can talk to you, okay? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> All right. And y'all know y'all got to listen to my babies. Don't even front. You know you got to listen to my babies. All right. Here you go, Brother Marquise. It's yeah, I would like to say uh, to all of the up-and-coming artists, established artists, well, all of the up-and-coming artists and, and all of the, the youth and and all the young brothers and sisters that are inspiring to get into the music industry, I would like to say, go to school, study entertainment law, study film and video and film and media and production, you know, know what you're getting into, own your own masters and try to keep everything in-house, try to do it all yourself, get into publicity, stay away from the record labels, and just promote yourself and believe in your dreams. Surround yourself with the right people. Always honor thy mother and father. And, and try to make something that's uplifting. Something that's worthwhile for the community. As well as give back to the community. And help bring others up. And help bring others up that you think that have talent. Or that have more talent than you basically try to give back and be the best human being you can possibly be. I mean, the record industry is a tough place and sometimes it's not geared up for nice people with big hearts that like to give. And you know, when you have to, you know, put that poker face on, you do that. But when you have to be intelligent and use your wits and your brain, do that extremely well, but basically educate yourself and know what you're getting into. Try to find you a mentor, somebody that can help you ask a lot of questions and study, study the craft, study the craft, keep the art form, art form going and, and, and really respect the culture and really respect the pioneers <clears throat> that paved the way for hip hop. You know, it's 50 years in hip hop right now. So everybody tends to forget, you know, where the foundation came from and and who laid the foundation so yeah so just just know the culture and study the craft and educate yourself and you'll be successful don't forget to tune in each and every wednesday night at 9 p.m eastern 8 p.m central and 6 p.m pacific for peachy tea time peachy news edition on Peachy News, they have families that come on live to tell their loved one story on how they were murdered through gun violence, domestic violence, the prison system, and even by the police. Tune in each and every Wednesday night. Come join us on All right, we are out of here. <laughs> that dog on me button. We love you, Brother Marquis. We love you, we love you, we love you. And thank you so much for what you have done in the hip hop community, baby. We love you and we will always remember you. Believe it. All right, y'all. Listen to my babies. And then I'm going to talk to Brother Marquis for a little bit. He my new friend. Yeah, he my new friend. Bye. Peace time. Peace time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is the time.